That's fine. It's your opinion. Yeah. They're American. Yeah. It's just, yeah, that's American. fine. Same. That's a what good idea. Um, New yeah, Jersey. Jersey. Jersey? Okay, I'm from Seattle. So what's, what's the... Uh, It'll just take one minute. You guys want to step over from the sidewalk? Yeah, might as well. Let's see what we got. Well, we want girls' opinions, too. You want to just be in the shot? You can talk as little or as much as you want. What's this going to be on? Like uh, CNN? My, you, yeah, I wish. Funny. No. <laughs> just on my YouTube channel. So today we're just asking people about hate laws in Canada and if you think they should exist or not exist. I think they should exist. Hate laws? Hate speech laws. Um, to, to ban them? I'm just wondering your opinion on them. We currently have them on the books. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you purposely misgender a person, you can be fined or taken to a human rights tribunal. I'm like anti that. You're against that? Yes. Okay, so basically if somebody prefers to be called a, a he or a she or whatever, and you purposely don't say what they prefer, then you could be fined under our laws. Well, you're for changing on me. You didn't say purposely at first. If yeah, they purposely... Did. Did. Oh, well then I am, a, I am pro that. If it's an accident, I'm anti being pressed charges. Okay, and how do we determine if it was an accident or not? In like a legal sense. Oh, that's, that's a good one. I don't necessarily think it should be fined if they're like... If they're saying it, right, like if it's just verbal, I think if it's coupled with like aggressive behavior and it's like more in a threatening way, then I think that it should be like if it's if it's I think it's malicious in general, like with malicious intent, because it can escalate really fast. Like words are super important, right? Like what we do as humans is talk and communicate. Right. So, you know, like I feel like you can't. I'm not a huge fan of like freedom of speech to the like the hundred percent. Like I think that things. To like the umps degree where you can just say whatever you want. This is my interview guy. <laughs> like I'm just not, and I grew up in the states, and now I live in Canada, and I've seen a lot of, you know, a lot of real damage done. I don't think you should just be able to, willy nilly. You should be yeah. held accountable, accountable for some of your words. If or if your words are behaviors. Toxic. So if we're, we've already got things on the books like harassment laws if you're aggressively coming after somebody over and over again, when obviously you can't assault anybody, whether that's spitting on them or hitting them in the face or anything. Do you think we really need to be policing language? And my point in that is, at what point do we stop putting words under a category where they can be banned? Like, let's say the word idiot gets banned in 50 years, because you, that used to be a medical term, a person who's an idiot or stupid or a moron or something. If some, enough people get offended by that, should we then be banning those words? Should we go with how the public opinion is at the time? Or should we just, I feel like it's kind of being on the safer side by letting everybody else, like if I say something mean to you, you're obviously not going to want to associate with me or people aren't going to want to watch what I do or like what I do or support in any way. So do you see where I'm coming from in that angle? Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes it a bit clearer because I can't really comment because like, I mean, I'm a white cisgender female. Why does your race matter in that? Because there's not that many, like I've never really experienced like hate terms. Honky cracker. Not really. I've well, never not really, personal. not personally. So no. But we can't base laws on personal experiences, no, not, can we? But I just feel like I can't, I can't, I don't think I'm a good representation of like being, I think you should talk to somebody who maybe has experienced it. Like how did that, like what do you think? You know? I've experienced racism against me, but that's, I don't think my personal like uh, experience matters in that. Because if I go to like a, a foreign country where I'm the only white person there, yeah. I might be likely to experience hate. So I don't true, think, true. I don't think my, uh, my gender or my ethnicity or my or my race or whatever so you want to call it are you anti i th i'm against people being cruel to each other for sure, sure. Yeah. but i'm i don't think we can start putting a list together of things that we can't say because then we run into problems you look like you got something yeah. to say. i don't think the regulation would actually help anything because like language evolves i mean you look at every sure. every six months there's something new added even faster now like to dictionaries and like you can google something oh, and it's a yeah it's a verb it exists um i don't think that that'll stop anything there's always yeah. going to be more hateful terms and i have a lot of faith in society to do it itself like you said um yeah. as far as as far as like you should be able to be healthy enough to put boundaries up to where you don't associate with people committing hate crimes with their speech True. um I mean, I think if you start ganging up on people and harassing them, but like you said, if there's already laws in place for that, yeah. um, you should be able to be, you should be accountable for what you say, but I don't know necessarily if that's a place for the law. Yeah, I, that's yeah. where I would come in, as I would say. I think there's enough social fabric we have today, today already, whether it's being outed on social media, for example. Of course, that can go too far, yeah. but in terms of me go, coming up to you and calling you a bunch of names, I'm pretty sure most people would not agree with that, no. especially in yeah. Toronto, especially in Canada. Is that fair to say? 
I Correct. think so. And also, like, just aren't there? There's so many other things for police to do. For sure. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, are we just gonna like not talk to each other for fear of like saying something that might offend? I don't know. I feel like it's just gonna be like everyone look down. <laughs> like, Very no true. It's a good point. Public, right? Anything else you wanted to guys? You guys wanted to add? No. Oh, no. Socks. Cool. Go socks. Nice. Oh, sorry, I have one question, guys. Do you do you guys know what this sign means? That's okay. Yeah, okay. okay. So people say that this is actually a hate term. It's a white power symbol. Uh, no, do you guys I think, think you're going to get that? Oh, I just learned about this the other day. It was it was in the, it was in Silver Linings playbook where that sign came from. It was part of being like a part no, of a club. That no, that's like okay. it's actually been, been the okay around. sign forever, but 4chan ran a prank on liberals well, and they basically wanted to figure out how they could trick all liberals into figuring out that it's yeah, <laughs> I'm an American. I'm bold. I thought, <laughs> it, was, I thought it was asshole. A S S O. That's what we said when we were kids. Say. So what I'm trying to say is, is 50, 51 percent of college students are actually afraid. This is actually like done by a an actual study. 51 percent of college students are actually afraid to speak their minds on college campuses because they're so afraid of offending people. There are like two million genders now. And if you don't know every single one of them, you could offend someone. What we're really trying to get to the heart of the matter is with hate speech laws, that can be a very slippery slope and that can easily come down. So me making this sign, if somebody says, no, that's not the okay sign, that's the white power sign. As a brown man, I find that hilarious. But this can actually happen. I have actually, so I'm actually a YouTuber as well and I've been called a white supremacist numerous times. No, not just that, but going around and running my little videos. I do like uh, social experiment videos. So I do like free hugs from Trump supporters. I do like identifying as transracial, right? If you can change your gender, why can't you change your race? Why can't I identify as a African-American woman, right? So I do these and the local Antifa chapter has actually termed us as white supremacists and put up 500 flyers around the city calling us white supremacists. Not yeah. sure if they saw, no, this was in Seattle. Okay. I'm not sure if they saw the irony of a brown guy and a black guy being at the top of their list, but you know, so we're just trying to convey that it can be a very slippery slope, and that's all I wanted to say. Right on. Cool. Good stuff, guys. Keep fighting the good fight, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Thank you.